All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x is equal to 65. So to start, I'm going to take the power of 2 over 2 on both sides. So now I have 3 to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2 minus 2 to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2 is equal to 65. And 2 over 2, that's the same thing as 1, and anything to the power of 1 is itself. So we are still going by the rules of mathematics here. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I can switch the places of these two. Or, sorry. I can actually switch... If I can actually rewrite this as 3 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I have 3 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 minus 2 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 65. Now... I'm going to let 3 to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable a and 2 to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now I have a squared minus b squared is equal to 65. So a squared minus b squared, that's the same thing as a plus b times a minus b, which is equal to 65. And 65 I can rewrite as 13 times 5. So in this case, a plus b would obviously be greater than a minus b. So we can think of a plus b as 13 because 13 is greater than 5, and a minus b as 5 because we have something times something is equal to something times something. So an a minus b is less than a plus b, so a minus b would be 5 because 5 is also less than 13, and a plus b is greater than a minus b, so a plus b would be 13. So now, this is a simple system of equations. These two cancel out, so I get 2a is equal to 18, meaning a is equal to 9. And if a is equal to 9, then b is equal to 4. So now, going back here, I have 3 to the power of x over 2 is equal to 9, and 2 to the power of x over 2 is equal to 4. So 3 to the power of 2 is obviously equal to 9. So I have x over 2 is equal to 2, meaning x is equal to 4. And I have, again, let's try this out. If we plug in 4 here, we get 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, and 4 equals 4, so that works out. So 4 is my solution. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 20 minus 1. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite this as 2 to the power of 10 times 2 minus 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 10 times 2 can be write as 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2. And I have this minus 1. So now, well, we have 1 here. And 1 is the same thing as 1 to the power of 2, right? 1 to the power of any number is going to equal 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared. I'm going to write 1 as 1 squared because it's the same thing. And now, if you notice, both of these numbers are squared. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a, this is going to equal 2 to the power of 10 and b, this is going to equal 1. So now if I plug these values into our formula here, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b, I get 2 to the power of 10 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. And if you guys already didn't know, 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. So now I have 1024 plus 1 times 1024 minus 1. 
Now, 1024 plus 1, that's going to equal 1025. 1024 minus 1 is 1023. So I have 1025 times 1023. And an easier way to solve this instead of just multiplying these two is I'm going to rewrite these with 1000s. So 1025, that's 1000 plus 25. 1023, that's 1000 plus 23. And this makes it a lot easier to find the product of these two because we can simply distribute. 1000 times 1000, that's 1000 squared, plus I have 1000 times 23. Plus, now we're going to distribute 25, 25 times 1,000 plus 25 times 23. So now we're going to simplify this. 1,000 squared is 1 million. 23 times 1,000 is 23,000. 25 times 1,000 is 25,000. 25 times, times 23 is 575. Now, all we have to do is add all of these. This is going to be equal 1 million, 48,000. 575. So this is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 6 minus x to the power of 3 is equal to 2. So to solve this, I'm going to first go ahead and subtract 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 6 minus x to the power of 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 6 here, I'm going to rewrite as x to the power of 3 times 2. And if I have something, or sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 3 times 2 here, I'm going to rewrite as x to the power of 3 to the power of 2. So I have this minus x to the power of 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So now I have y squared minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we have a simple quadratic equation here. So to solve this, I'm going to write negative y here as negative 2y plus y. So now if I, I'm going to factor by grouping. So if I factor out y from y squared minus 2y and factor out 1 from y minus 2, because 1 is the greatest common factor of y and negative 2. So first off, factor out y, so I have y times y minus 2 plus 1 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. So now if I factor out y minus 2 from here, I get y minus 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have y minus 2 is equal to 0, and I have y plus 1 is equal to 0. So for y minus 2 equals 0, y is simply equal to 2, and for y plus 1 equals 0, y is equal to negative 1. Now, recall how we let x to the power of 3 equal to y. So if x to the power of 3 is equal to y, and we have two values of y, well, let's first start with y equals 2. So x to the power of 3 equals 2. I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. Cube root of x to the power of 3 is x, and so we have x to the power, or sorry, x is equal to cube root of 2. Now, for negative 1, I have x to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1. I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. Cube root of x to the power of 3 again is x, and the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So my two solutions for this are the cube root of 2 and negative 1. So now to check, I'm going to plug these two in. So first, the cube root of 2 So the cube root of 2 to the power of 3, that's simply equal to negative 2. And the cube root of 2 to the power of 6 is 4. So I have 4 minus 2 equals 2, and 2 equals 2. So this is right. And negative 1, I have negative 1 to the power of 6, which is 1. Minus negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 is 2, so I have 2 equals 2. So both solutions are right. 